the February 17th Corning Township Zoning Commission will come to order. First, we would ask you to silence your cell phones. Next, we would like, would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Could we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Smith? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Tchaikovsky? Here. Mr. Westfall? Here. We need to read. Yeah. What? What? Mr. Mark Faring. Mark Faring, please, would you take, come up on a stand, please? The Coleraine Township Zoning Commission meets on the third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. in the Coleraine Township Trustees Chambers. 4200 Springdale Road, Coleraine Township. The procedures are specified in Section 3.2.2, .2, Rules and Powers of the Coleraine Township Zoning Resolution. We hear zoning change requests recommend either approval or not approval and forward them to the trustees who are the legislative body for the township. This process is governed by the Ohio Revised Code. On the agenda today, we have a final development plan, the way the final development plan it works is the zoning staff will make a presentation, the applicant may also make a presentation, the zoning commission will have a discussion followed by a motion to approve or deny the request, and the commission will have a roll call vote. In new, in new business, we will initiate a text amendment, and that's... Uh, we just initiate it, <laughs> make a motion to initiate it. Okay, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of January 20th meeting. Does anybody have any changes or additions? None so appearing, the chair will entertain a motion to accept the January 20th, 2.15 meeting minutes. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the meeting. The minutes of the January 20th, 2015 meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next on the agenda is the public address portion, and this is where anybody that has anything that they would like to say to the Zoning Commission that does not have anything to do with anything that's on the agenda, this is the time they do it. Would anybody like to address this? None appearing, we'll move on. Next on the agenda is a final development plan for case ZA2014-07 Kroger Marketplace. Staff, you have a presentation? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, commissioners, and thanks, everybody. I know um, today is Fat Tuesday, so I'm sure everyone would much rather uh, be, be reveling, uh, but I appreciate um, you all coming out tonight. Um, the final development plan that's on the agenda tonight is for the um, Kroger Marketplace on the uh, northwest corner of uh, Coleraine and Springdale, uh, that area. Uh, the applicant is Vandercar on behalf of Kroger. Um, the applicant proposes to, to rezone um, an assemblage of properties to plan development business. Uh, that process has already occurred, and um, the trustees in January um, uh, approved the preliminary development plan, which changed the, the zoning designation to PDB. So the next step in the process is to come back to the Zoning Commission for a final development plan approval, which is where um, uh, items such as landscaping, lighting, um, signage, architectural details, uh, et cetera, are all, are all reviewed at this, at this stage by the Zoning Commission. Uh, the Kroger Marketplace will be 134,000 uh, square feet. And um, so with that as a prelude, um, We'll jump right in. This is the site. We have Springdale Road uh, running across the, the southern portion of the site, or the southeast portion of the site. Coleraine Avenue is shown off to the east. Um, the area bounded by the yellow <clears throat> is the area that uh, is, is, has been changed to Plan Development Business District. This is the zoning uh, on the site. So we'll just um, start making our way through um, the staff review. I'd just also like to point out that um, this application was presented, was submitted um, to, 
to my department in January for the January uh, meeting. Um, after the staff report was produced and, and uh, put online and shared with, with the development team, uh, the development team requested um, uh, a month to sort of digest um, uh, some of the recommendations that were being made in the staff report. Uh, in the intervening time since last month, um, the development team has uh, has had a chance to review very, very thoroughly all of the conditions uh, that I'm recommending to you tonight, and um, they'll they have done quite a bit of work to uh, to make changes to the to the uh, plan, and they'll they'll present those. Um, but I, what we'll be talking about tonight was the um, was the original proposal uh, slated for uh, January's zoning commission meeting. So we'll start with landscaping. Uh, the landscaping plan that was presented, we talk, we talk about landscaping in, in terms of three areas. So when I talk about the streetscape buffer area, we're talking about this area right down on Springdale Road. When we talk about the lot buffer area, we're talking about this area between the residential properties and, um, and the development. And then when we're talking about um, parking area landscaping, that would be you know, the interior landscaping portion. So. Um, Starting with the streetscape buffer, the applicant proposed um, a, a 15 foot streetscape planting area where 15 feet is required. Um, and I have, to, I have to start by saying that I made an error uh, when I reviewed this. Um, I calculated the, the area for lot buffering to start down here at Springdale and go all the way back. And so a lot of my calculations for the lot buffer um, were, were in error because actually, um, the way the zoning resolution reads, the lot buffer starts where it is adjacent to residential property. So um, you'll see uh, there, there, I had to make a change because, because of that error. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, but first, we'll start with the streetscape buffer area. They proposed 15 feet of uh, streetscape planting. 15 feet is required. Uh, they propose 17 canopy trees where 14 are required. Um, applicant proposes approximately 1,765 square feet of landscaped area in the streetscape buffer. Um, only 720 square feet is required by the zoning resolution. Applicant proposes uh, to place streetscape luminaires similar to those seen uh, in the Corian Avenue corridor now, um, um, and those would be spaced at 75 feet on center. So transitioning to the lot buffer, um, the applicant received a variance from the 30-foot lot buffer requirement. Um, the applicant proposes, and this is this this is an error. Also, applicant proposes proposed an eight-foot fence. The trustees um, required in their approval a 12-foot fence be constructed. So, uh, whereas an eight-foot fence was proposed, a 12-foot fence will be required. Um, the materials and look to the fence um, will be very similar to that uh, found at the Harrison Kroger store. Um, and um, let's see, the applicant proposes 56 evergreens, and this is where the, the calculations got skewed by um, where we we're starting to calculate from. So um, this is actually, it, it's okay. They proposed 56 evergreens and 56 are required. The applicant proposes uh, 98 shrubs and 98 are required. Uh, in the parking area, the landscaping in the parking area, the applicant proposes to landscape 22% of the parking area where only 15% is required. The applicant proposes to use landscaped islands that are approximately 360 square feet um, where a minimum of 270 square feet is required. Applicant proposes one double loaded parking row on the east side of the parking field that has more than 15 stalls without a landscaped island. <clears throat> so our zoning resolution says that when you have um, that many stalls you need to incorporate at least one landscape island. The applicant does not propose to include um, any of the 10-foot landscaped medians in the parking field where two would be required. And just to point out what those would be, um, the zoning resolution says that when you have these rows, it says every fourth row needs to have a 10-foot strip that would run of, of landscaped area that would run you know, perpendicular to the, the front of the building. Um, the applicant proposes um, um, none of those. Um, Let's see. The applicant does not propose to use landscaped islands as part of its stormwater management plan, um, which is what it, it is. What it is. Um, the applicant uh, proposes 71 trees in the parking area where 71 are required. The applicant proposes 230 shrubs where 217 are required. The applicant doesn't specify the clear trunk height of the trees used. Um, <clears throat> zoning resolution requires six foot clear trunk height in uh, 
parking areas so that you can see as you're turning corners and things like that. Um, the applicant proposes two inch caliper trees where two and a half are required. Uh, and then just on a general note, um, I recommend the use of, of wood mulch <clears throat> in the landscape, well, on the site, rather than a rock material. And uh, I recommend the addition of fountain grass around the detention area to sort of screen that from view. So the detention area, you'll, you'll, you'll recall, um, is located in the southeastern part of the site here. And um, my recommendation is to sort of wrap that in a ornamental grass to, to um, sort of screen that from view. Um, so that is, that's, that's a review of the landscaping proposal. Um, the lighting plan that was submitted, um, <clears throat> the, as it relates to lighting, uh, the maximum average illumination on the parking lot is 3.3 uh, foot candles. Um, the zoning resolution uh, stipulates a maximum of two foot candles. Um, maximum illumination at the building entrance is three and a half foot candles where um, less than five is required. The applicant proposes uh, using 30 foot poles uh, to house the, the lights out in the parking field. Um, the zoning resolution requires 24 feet or less. Excuse me. The applicant proposes to mount light fixtures on the sides of the building at a height of 15 feet. Um, so as I look at this, um, and given the proximity of the residential properties on the west side of the site, I recommend using poles that do not exceed 24 feet in height for the fixtures that are on this half of the site. So the, that would correspond to these fixture numbers that you see here. Um, so my recommendation is that these fixtures do not exceed 24 feet in height per the zoning resolution uh, so as not to so as to throw the minimum amount of light possible um, on adjacent properties. Um, and given also the proximity of residential properties to the west side of the site, um, I recommend mounting the fixtures that are going to be on the west side of the site uh, at a height not to exceed 12 feet. And um, so here we see this is the west side of the, of the building. Um, my recommendation is to drop the wall mounted cutoff fixtures uh, to a height of 12 feet. The, the, the wall is going to also be at 12 feet. These fixtures are cutoff fixtures, uh, so they throw light directly down. Um, so that's an attempt to, to minimize any disruption um, on the residential properties to the west. So that's lighting. Um, as we look at the, at the site layout um, and we look at parking in particular, the applicant proposes 543 parking spaces. The zoning resolution prescribes four spaces per thousand of gross floor area, or uh, 535 spaces in this case. But there is a provision in the zoning resolution that allows for an increase of up to 10%, um, or uh, 53 spaces, as of right. So they are within their as of right um, amount of parking that is you know, required by the zoning resolution. Um, the applicant proposes parking stalls of the dimension of nine and a half by 19. Our, um, our minimum parking stall uh, dimensions are nine by 19. Um, the parking field is located primarily in the front of the building where the zoning resolution requires the parking field to be located in the side or the rear to the maximum extent practical. Um, the applicant proposes four foot sidewalks along Springdale Road, provides four foot internal sidewalks that connect the building to Springdale and Coleraine. Um, the, and we can see those uh, running here and also here. Um, the applicant proposes uh, primary two-way drive aisles with a width of 30 feet, where the minimum width is, uh, is 24 feet. Um, the applicant proposes 25-foot two-way drive aisles between the rows of parking, where 24 feet is required. So again, the main drive aisles here are going to be 30 feet, and then the uh, drive aisles in between the parking stalls will be 25 feet. The applicant does not show the number of stacking spaces for the um, drive through ATM pharmacy. Four stacking spaces is required. The signage proposal can be sort of broken up into three parts also. Um, the wall signage that's going to go on the building, and then <clears throat> the uh, pylon or freestanding sign that'll be located on Springdale Avenue, or Springdale Road, and then the signage that'll be on the canopy. So um, these are the signs that'll be located on the building. And this is the proposed, um, 
This is the proposed uh, pylon or freestanding sign. The applicant proposes uh, 20 foot tall, um, 350, approximately 350 square foot um, uh, freestanding sign. So to sum all that up, we have these are these are all the signs that are proposed on the building. That totals to 434 square feet of signage. Um, you know the the total the the building frontage is 450 feet, I believe. Um, is that right? 450 feet across. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, so it's it's in keeping with the one linear foot or one square foot per linear foot of frontage. Um, the gas canopy. The applicant proposes to put. Um, Four signs, one on the, the front, rear, left, and right. You know, these are signs that'll say, you know, the Kroger with the little Kroger gas pad logo, and that totals to 50, approximately 51 square feet. And then the freestanding sign is 350, approximately 350 square feet and 20 feet in height. The um, building elevations, um, these are, this is a different building elevation than was originally submitted. This is the applicant's reaction um, to the, uh, uh, to the conditions that were suggested in the staff report. Um, whereas before the building was just a solid brick facade, um, the applicant now has the requisite um, uh, 40 foot offsets to sort of break up this large building facade. You'll see there's a, um, it's hard to see, but there's a cantilevered uh, sort of entrance way here. Um, and uh, as we look, boy, that's hard to see from this distance, but um, uh, you'll you'll notice other differences that are proposed here that were not included in your January packet are um, decorative lights um, similar to those seen at the at the Fairfield store, which are very attractive outdoor decorative luminaires, um, and they've also uh, there's a there's a, a cornice an eight inch cornice treatment across the top, and um, they have brought the, the stone water table that was there before. They've now sort of enhanced the facade by, um, by putting stone all around the entranceways to sort of call out even more so that you know, that is, in fact, the entrance. Um, that's the front elevation. And the rear elevation is shown here. Um, and then we have the two side elevations. OK, so. Um, you know, other considerations that we have to look at are impervious surface ratio. The proposed site has an ISR of 77%, uh, where the maximum ISR is 75%. Uh, the dumpsters are appropriately located and screened. Um, they are located actually internal to the, to the, um, to the building, and um, the compactor is internal. So that's, that's fantastic. That should cut down on noise and um, we also, in terms of the architectural design standards, the zoning resolution, as I mentioned, requires these facade offsets, which are the, those you can see in the terms of those different colors. Um, those sort of jut out a bit. So um, uh, the proposed building in January didn't have those offsets. Um, the zoning resolution requires that the building have three-dimensional cornice treatments that extend at least eight inches from the parapet facade plane. Um, the old building uh, appeared to use sort of just a metal coping on top of the parapet that didn't add much architectural interest. So that has been modified um, by, the, by the applicant. And finally, uh, the zoning resolution requires that all roof-based mechanical equipment be screened from view with a parapet wall with a cornice. Um, and it wasn't clear from the drawings that the mechanicals would be appropriately screened. So, um, so with that, um, we can move to, you know, to the staff recommendation. And the staff, re staff recommendation is to approve the final development plan with the following conditions. Two of the conditions were stricken because of that error in, in the calculation of the lot uh, buffer area. So I'm, I'm striking number two and number three. But the conditions that I recommend are that the applicant shall install all the appropriate streetscape luminaires in the streetscape buffer area, that the applicant shall incorporate uh, one 10, in, or 10 foot landscaped median in the parking field um, and shall plant canopy trees in the median at a rate of one canopy tree per 40 feet. Now. Um, well, I'll, I'll come back to that one. Um, all the trees in the parking area shall have a clear trunk height of six feet at the time of planting. Uh, all the deciduous trees used on the site shall have a minimum caliper width of two and a half you know, inches um, at the time of planting. The uh, landscaped area should be mulched with wood or similar mulching. No stone mulch shall be permitted. There we go. 
Ornamental grasses shall be incorporated into the landscaping plan to screen to the greatest extent practicable the stormwater detention area on Springdale Road. The height of lighting fixtures 3, 8, 13, 16, 50, 51, 52, 53, 56, 57, and 58 shall not exceed uh, 24 feet in height. The wall pack, or um, that's kind of a misleading term, it's, it's actually a, a cutoff, wall mounted cutoff lighting fixture. Um, the, the three that are on the west side, number 44, 45, and 46, shall be mounted to the wall at a height not to exceed 12 feet. Um, the facade of the building shall be modified um, to include the wall offsets as, they, as we showed in that, um, in that last rendering. The three-dimensional coordinates treatment shall be incorporated into the design uh, per the zoning resolution. All the roof-based mechanical equipment shall be screened from view using parapets with cornices per the zoning resolution. The facade of the building shall be modified to incorporate stone in a similar manner um, as the one as, as what we see at Fairfield, which which was which was taken care of as you saw. The facade of the building shall be modified to incorporate <clears throat> decorative lighting similar to the Kroger building in Fairfield, Ohio. That also was incorporated. Um, and finally, that um, at the time that this was written, we didn't have the detailed freestanding signs. So um, the condition would be that. Uh, you know, detailed freestanding signage drawing shall be submitted with a height of no greater than 15 feet in an area of no more than 150 square feet. So those are the conditions that I recommend. In order to, um, <clears throat> there are several variances that I would I would recommend also. One of them is uh, the zoning resolution requires uh, parking islands, as I mentioned, for um, when there are more than 15 stalls in a row. There's just one uh, double stacked parking row that doesn't have um, that landscape island, and I recommend a variance from the easternmost parking row. Um, the landscaped medians, the applicant shall be permitted uh, to not install one of the two required landscaped medians in the parking area, and I'll come back to that. Um, three, the maximum average lighting of the parking area um, shall be allowed to exceed 2.0 as shown on the lighting plan, which shows 3.3, and you know, to the naked eye, the difference between 2.0 and 3.3 foot candles is, is minimal. Um, uh, maximum height of the lighting poles, um, my recommendation is to grant a variance for um, those 30 foot lighting poles <clears throat> that were not talked about in the conditions. So that means that all the lighting poles on the eastern portion of the site, um, my recommendation is to allow those to, to exceed the 30 feet. Um, the location of parking, the parking shall be permitted to um, to be located in the front of the building. Total wall signage. Um, wall signs shall be permitted as shown <coughs> in the FTP. And <coughs> wall signage height. The wall signs shall be permitted as shown on the FTP. Um, some of the wall signs exceed this, the four foot maximum height. And when you have a building that's 450 feet wide, um, it, it starts to look really out of place to have a four foot. Um, so it, it does work. And as we see on those, um, as we see on, on these renderings, that's a seven foot tall Kroger right there, Kroger symbol, and it that works functionally within the architecture of the building. It's just such a large building. Um, and finally, I think, yes, um, the ISR shall be permitted to exceed 75%, but not to exceed 77%. So I, I told you I'd come back to one of these. Um, the landscaped medians um, had lots of discussion about the landscaped medians and uh, their role. Um, I think that the zoning resolution is well-intentioned. Um, uh, I, can, I can see, you know, not requiring this if that's the, the you know, if that's the will of the board um, because uh, they have, because one thing, it segments the, the parking lot into two different places and you can find yourself, you know, all the way down one of these rows and be, yeah, let's see if I can do it illustratively here. There we go. You can, you know, if we had it, if if the um, boulevard or the the median was running here, and you were walking all the way down here, only to realize that your car is over here, you would then have to walk all the way back and around and down. So, I there are ways that you could make cut throughs, but um, I, I can see how that would be a difficulty. Um, also, the applicant proposes 22 percent proposes landscaping on 22% of the parking area, which does exceed our, uh, mac our, our minimum of 15%. So there's already um, quite a bit of landscaping uh, in and around the parking area. So 
Um, so that that does sort of mitigate that. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Where are the loading uh, docks located and, and all? They are in the rear of the building. Um, so loading docks would be right here. And they're external? They are... I'll let the applicant yeah, answer that. We, we can get to that when you yeah. guys make your presentation. Sure. Any more questions for staff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the traffic study, what came out of that? Ah, good point. Okay, so the traffic study um, came back um, and recommended the widening of Springdale Road to add a receiving westbound lane. Okay, so what that means is um, uh, right now, on if you're coming to this intersection, you have a right only, uh, a <coughs> straight only, and two left lanes. Um, the idea is to turn the northernmost lane, which is currently right only, into a right through and have a receiving lane here for the, uh, and, and what that would allow is for, um, that would allow for the signal to be retimed so that you could get more people going, you could make this motion quicker, the westbound Springdale motion quicker, which would give you more time to, because this is, this is gonna be the bottleneck, is the left off of Springdale, I think, um, um, and and it, it would allow there to be more time um, to dedicate to the the movements that need it um, by allowing more volume to pass, you know, on the east from the east to the west. Does that make sense? Um, and and the other thing is the interesting thing from the traffic study I thought was, um, you know, Kroger knows where its um, its customers are coming from because of the Kroger Plus cards. Um, so they were able they're able to pretty accurately uh, model where all their customers are going to be coming from. So, you know, they can say, you know, we have X number, we can expect X number of trips from the south, X number of trips from the west, X number of trips. So the, the, um, the traffic study um, has been approved, my understanding is, um, by, the, by, the, by ODOT and um, is currently being reviewed by Hamilton County engineers. I've had a conversation with Hamilton County engineers. Um, and they said uh, they they will have some some stipulations, but um, uh, my recommendation would be uh, to condition the uh, the approval of. The, wait a minute, that might have that might have already been a, a condition of the preliminary development plan. Um, it was the, one of the conditions of the preliminary traffic. development plan was the the submission of a traffic study um, okay. mm -hmm. uh, that is acceptable. So they will have to submit, you know, they will have to. Uh, uh, do all the things that Hamilton County Engineer requires them to do. Who foots the bill for the new lane? The developer. Does that new lane infringe upon any of this landscape buffer or anything that's been designed as it as shown? No, it, the la the receiving lane. It's it's odd the configuration of the right of way here. So you can um, the receiving lane goes from the corner here to just just at the site. Yeah very close to where the site starts. So the impacted area for, for the new pavement, the only new pavement that's gonna be needed is like is right here. Okay. Um, and that's, so. So the receiver lane is gonna impact the, the, the old Pearl Vision corner? And the, and the entr driveway? And the entrance to, and the entrance Walgreens. to Walgreens. Walgreens. But right that right of way, I believe, is already there. It's our, so there, there wouldn't need to be a right of way take. It's okay. just a matter of um, of expanding the pavement into the right of way that already exists. And is, there's a retention basin right there as well. Is that going to all move? Or? No, that it doesn't. Actually, the receiving lane stops right about where the site starts. So where the site starts. Yeah. So it'll come. Their site or the the corners. Their site. Yeah, their site. Okay. Yep. So it doesn't impact that. Right. Uh, the thinking behind leaving some at 30, some at 24 light poles, and leaving the wall packs or the cutoff lights on the lights on the building, what's, what's the thinking behind that? Um, so, um, my understanding is that Kroger has a spec um, that exceeds 30 feet, maybe it's 35 feet, we'll say for conversation. Um, our zoning resolution requires 24 feet. Uh, they proposed 30 feet. Um, and, you know, 
what I was, what I'm concerned about is light bleeding off site into the residential properties. And um, so in order to mitigate that impact, uh, my recommendation was to drop the westernmost light poles down to 24 feet. Now, you know, there's, yeah. Any more questions? Thank you. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, what about the Hamilton County Saw Water and Conservation District? Um, have we have we got a report on on that as of yet? That's a good question. I um, let me see if I've got that in here. They would have to they would have to review um, the the appropriate um, you know erosion and sedimentation um, plans and uh, and and they this development would not be able to to move forward unless they meet all of the Hamilton County Soil and Water Conservation guidelines. So. Are we expecting to get that soon? Well, I think it's a, it's a it's kind of a process that's separate and distinct from this one because um, you know all the things that that um, go into a development we don't we're just a small part of it. So we're looking at the zoning and the items that are in our zoning resolution. The soil and water, you know, the uh, erosion sedimentation control, those aren't a part of our zoning resolution. So we rely on Hamilton County Soil and Water Conservation to do their job and ensure that. Um, that you know erosion and sedimentation isn't going to be an issue so and and they always have done a fantastic job with that if we allow them to go over the 75 percent impervious surface to 77 does that cause problems for hamilton county or that's that an, within I, yeah i think that's just an engineering that's that would uh, there's an engineering solution to that so um you know and two percent isn't uh i guess two percent on a large site is Larger than two percent on a smaller site, but but, um, but, but at the not. same time we're we're in the right ballpark. Exactly. Yep. Hold on. Uh, I, I missed it while you were going through all the slides. So the wall sign is for the four hundred thirty-four. That's below the, the the required square footage of wall signage. Yeah. Let me. Um, I don't have my scale with me, but as I recall, the the width of the building was approximately four hundred and fifty feet. 499. So that would be below. So that would be below the one. And then yeah. for the gas, for the canopy, the 50.9, is that also acceptable? Yeah, so total, you know, total wall signage, whether it's on the canopy or it's on the building, is less than the one square foot per linear foot of frontage okay. on the building. So. And then uh, are, are we going to speak with the client about the, pole, the, the pylon sign or yourself? Uh, I, I, I believe that the pylon sign should be capped at 15 feet and um, 150 square feet. Uh, so right now at, at 20 by 13 is 260 square feet. So you'd have to take it at least down well, for yeah. And that was 50, 15 by 10 at least. Right, and that was something that was included that. Yeah, in the staff report from uh, from January even. So you know walls you know, and and. This is this is important. Um, you know, all of our developments are important, but uh, pylon signage has been sort of the scourge of Corian Avenue for a while, and we we do an awful lot to keep our our pylon signage under control. Um, so that's that's why that's important. And just, I know it's clear on the plan, but just to make it abundantly clear, the Goodyear sign that's up right now is going to be gone. Yeah, and that's one of the benefits that, um, you know, I think there's actually three signs on the site that will be removed as a result of this, so. And when we're talking about the fence in the back, is that the rock-looking fence, like Gavin yes. Harrison? Yes, mm -hmm. that's the 12-foot fence, um, and yes, it, it'll have a, a masonry-like appearance. Is the old McDonald's on this property? It's yes. Gone. So it'll be gone. Yep. Okay, I have another question. Sure. Con condition number four. Yep. Set by the trustees. Um, prior to get approval of minor modification to the final development plan? Yes. J.D. Byrider, where do we stand on that? We'll hear that right after this case. case. Yep, that'll be the next one. So if we... Um, if we're successful with this application, then we'll move to the to the JD by rider. Okay. Right, right after. Thank this. you. Sure. Any more questions? Yeah. Anything planned for Yellowstone as far as either is there any reconstruction on that? Is it just the way it is where it gets cut off? It gets cut off. Any new pavement on it? Any new curbs? 
Is that going to get updated? Yeah. So, well, you mean you're talking about this front part? Yeah. I mean, front from, part from Colerain, you know, where Yellowstone starts. To, to the where, site right here? Yeah. Um, that will remain a township road. Um, and I don't believe any improvements are planned on, on Yellowstone. One more. Sure. Are we going to deal with the issue of irrigation? We talked about the landscape. Yep. Well, um, so irrigation is is not something that's found in our zoning resolution, but um, has been a topic of conversation with the zoning commission for for a while. Um, uh, it's not required by the zoning resolution, and um, and we do have a property maintenance resolution that requires, you know, say for example, uh, all the trees get planted, and <clears throat> because of poor site design or whatever, because it's not irrigated, they all die. Our property maintenance resolution uh, would allow me to go to Kroger's and say, hey, Kroger, you know, this isn't acceptable. You have to maintain your landscaping in, in a way that's in keeping with the property maintenance resolution. So um, uh, my philosophy has been to let the decision as to how, you know, they want to irrigate the, how they want to water their, their landscaping, leave that to them. Um, because if they choose to not irrigate, and the stuff dies, then we'll have an issue. Um, don't we want to catch it before it gets to that state? Um, well, I, I don't know. I would. I leave it because I'm I'm not a landscape architect, and and that's not that's not really my background. So I would say that if the landscape architect designs a, a landscaping plan that um, that he believes will thrive, um, or she believes will thrive, then you know I I defer to their expertise, and and then you know if if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, then we're there to, to remind them that they have to maintain their, their landscaping. And this actually did come up recently um, uh, at Macy's. They, they, a long time ago, they, Macy's put up those sort of bushes that sort of hang off of the building there, and several of them were dying. And so we were able to talk to Macy's and say, guys, you know, that's not acceptable. You need to, you need to fix those. Um, so, and they're right next to the building, so I would assume that they were irrigated. But, um, but in any case. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Jeff. Sure, sure. Any more questions? Does the applicant have a presentation? <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. My name is Steve Dragon. I'm with Vandercar Holdings. We're the developer for Kroger of this project. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, township staff and Mr. Mills in particular for uh, all the time they spent working with us on uh, uh, bringing this project to where it is today um, appreciate your patience also we did ask the table uh, from last month's meeting so we'd had a, had a chance to look at the the conditions and the comments from the staff report and uh, Kroger has has put a lot of effort into to reviewing those and into to addressing those comments um, as, as best as possible and, and actually put a fair amount of expense to to uh, making the best effort to accommodate all those conditions um, I'd like to review them just briefly if I could um, from, from the conditions listed in, in, in Jeff's report. Um, uh, I'll go over the ones that I think we're, in, we're in entirely in agreement with and full compliance with. Uh, the first condition with regard to the, the streetscape uh, luminaires, uh, we agree and we'll make the changes appropriate to that plan uh, to include those uh, per the condition. Um, as Jeff mentioned, the second and third uh, condi conditions were resolved, I think, uh, the, the plantings are appropriate in those areas. Um, I'm going to skip number four for now. Um, uh, numbers five and six refer to the, some landscape dimensions, and we agree uh, we're, we are in agreement with those two conditions uh, regarding the, the, the clear trunk height and the, uh, the caliber of the trees to be planted, make the appropriate changes to the landscape plans to note those specifications, uh, and also uh, we'll, we'll comply with uh, condition number seven, which is to uh, incorporate a uh, uh, wood mulch and, and not stone mulch in those in the planting areas um, as well as to uh, comply with condition eight which is to uh, incorporate ornamental grasses along the uh, the um, the stormwater detention area with fronts along Springdale Road um, so all those changes will will be made to, to the to the landscape plan and specifications and, and compliance um, with uh, with regard to uh, to uh, the the lighting plan um, we uh, uh, I'd like uh, come back to condition number nine uh, and ten uh, here in a minute and and move on to the, the rest of the conditions which I think uh, 11 through uh, through 15 deal with the, the facade of the building and and that's uh, 
where probably most of the significant changes were made between the previous submittal and this one. And uh, um, I think uh, Kroger has been able to comply with those satisfactorily. I think they've gone above and beyond. In fact, I uh, appreciate that the township's desire to, to keep attractive looking buildings in the township. And I think Kroger's done a good job of, of modifying the prototypical building, which is already, I, I think, a very attractive building to, to, to comply with the township's requirements. Um, and I think it'll be, it'll be a, a, a real nice building and it'll be one that's unique to Coleraine Township. And, um, and, uh, and I think something the township could really be pleased with, with the, uh, the facade offsets and, and the, the changes in materials across the facade, as well as the stone uh, accents and the uh, the lighting fixtures. I, th I think it'll be a very attractive building indeed, and uh, and something I think the township will be proud of. Um, with regard to uh, with regard to the the freestanding signage, um, Kroger, uh, we have submitted a, a plan that shows a 20 foot high sign. Um, I guess uh, for clarification, I, I I would would like to ask for some clarification about the sign face. If, if you look at the graphic area of that sign, um, I think the dim dimensions detail out to about 150 feet of, of total graphic area on the sign. Um, you know, if, if you go, if you just take a 20, 20 times 13 feet, 20 feet tall by 13 feet wide, it, it's I think the 260 feet that was mentioned earlier. But uh, if you're looking at only the, the sign graphics, which I think is what the, the township is attempting to regulate for their for the requirements, I think we're much closer to that 150 foot standard. Um, you know, a significant portion of that sign is you know, the two and a half foot by 13 foot base, which is a, a stone base. And I don't think the intent is for the township to eliminate a feature like that. Um, and, and, it's, and I think we're, we're very close to compliance with that 150 foot sign graphic face area. Um, with regard to the sign height, um, we, we we're asking for your accommodation there. Um, as, as you know, this is a pretty significant uh, commercial development. It's, it's, it's more than a, a single, uh, a, a single storefront. Um, it's a pretty significant commercial redevelopment, and and we think the sign is appropriate uh, given given the, the other signage in the area, and in particular the amount of signage that's going to be eliminated from the area, um, as as was a little bit discussed here. There's currently a, a sign for Goodyear that's I think nearly 50 feet tall, and probably. Um, something on the order of 200 to 250 feet of, of sign face. Um, that sign goes away. There's two other freestanding signs that will also go away. It'll be a much more attractive uh, sign there. I think, I hope you'll agree that the sign that Kroger's is proposing rather than just a, a, a sort of a stark pole sign, this is a much more attractive uh, sort of a monument looking sign uh, that, that the, the dimensions are, are, are much more appropriate for the, the Colerain corridor today, and I think it's in keeping with what's out there today. While it is a little bit above the sign height, we believe because the sign is is fairly remote from where a majority of the traffic will be coming from, from the, the Colerain Avenue side, we think the additional five feet gives it a little bit more visibility so that traffic can see where the, the appropriate entrance is for the, for the marketplace project. Um, in addition, you know, to limiting, to eliminating the number of signs that are there today, and, and particularly some of the, the very out of compliance uh, signs that are there today, um, this this sign I think is 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 not going to be any larger and probably a little bit smaller than than the existing Cincinnati sign that'll be sort of right next door and adjacent to it. Um, so, again, we'd ask for your accommodation here. I, I know the signage is sensitive. I, I think if you if you look at this sign, it's a very appropriate sign for the development. It's 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 well scaled, and I think. Again, I think the sign face area is very close. I think the height of the sign is, is, uh, is, is obviously slightly over the, the 15 feet uh, limit. But, uh, but again, given, given the scale of the project and the location, I, I would hope you'd, you'd give it consideration. Um, moving back to uh, the, the lighting conditions, uh, conditions uh, 9 and 10 on the staff report, um, with, with regard to the, the pole height, uh, you know, we are uh, the initial sign or the initial lighting plan included uh, 30, 30 foot poles in the uh, the main parking field. Um, I believe those poles are give you kind of the optimal luminance levels across the parking field. It creates a nice even level of illumination, um, and I, I think you see that in the photometrics. If you compare, we also submitted a plan over the last month that shows. Uh, a plan in compliance with the staff recommendations where we've lowered some of those poles to 24 feet um, and, and and we can do that um, it's but I don't think it gives you a better a better product in terms of, of what you're trying to achieve first of all it doesn't it doesn't 
improve, I mean, the illuminance levels at, at the western property line are zero with the plan as initially submitted, zero with the plans lowered to 24 feet. Uh, so you're not, I don't, I don't think you're achieving anything in terms of the main goal of that you're trying to get to. We're already using cutoff fixtures and we're controlling those lenses so that we're not throwing light onto the other properties. Um, yeah. What it does do, if you lower the poles, it gives you brighter spots. You get hotter areas and cooler areas so that the lighting is not as, as even. It, it becomes more, I think, eye-catching when you have a, a hot, hot and light, lighter spots. And in, and in fact, it actually inc slightly increases the overall average intensity level of, of the, the lighting in the parking field uh, by lowering those poles down a little bit. So again, if, uh, if that's you know what the township's desire is, then 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 Kroger can comply. Uh, but we'd we'd like you to to consider uh, the the initial submittal. We think it overall it'll give the township a better uh, a better project, um, and and it's 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 what Kroger's preference would be. Um, with regard to uh, condition number ten, I, th I think uh, Jeff caught. Uh, caught it correctly. We aren't installing uh, wall pack fixtures. But, but these aren't fixtures that'll throw light out from the wall. These are cut off, down directed fixtures. They are wall mounted, and and we are willing to to Kroger is willing to to uh, lower those to 12 foot to the 12 foot height as per the condition. But I just wanted to clarify that. Um, let's see, and then <clears throat> so finally, the uh, the last condition is is the one that's that's most critical. Uh, from Kroger's perspective, and that's that's condition number four, the the landscape median island. Um, uh, this is this is a it's an element of the project that Kroger takes, you know, very very seriously. They they feel very strongly about, um, and and we we appreciate uh, the township's attempt to to sort of meet us in the middle here. But the the fact is that that, that these kind of islands in a grocery store parking lot. Can be very disruptive and and can, can, can cause hazards. Um, you know, obviously, you, you know how what, what Kroger's customers are. They typically shop with bass carts. Um, these kind of islands make it difficult to find cut crosses if you if you walk down the wrong aisle to get your car. Getting from one side to the other is very difficult. Um, it creates uh, it creates a tripping nuisance and obviously difficulty in moving the the, cust the, the bass carts across. Um, additionally, we uh, Kroger's has found that it creates it creates some level of confusion. Many other customers are obviously uh, families or mothers with small children. They're distracted. These are busy parking areas. There's carts in the aisles. There's people trying to traverse, and it just creates it, it creates more uh, more difficulty. It just, it's not as intuitive to walk through the parking lot when you've got a line line uh, sort of bisecting it. And so we'd ask for you to to uh, to, uh, to, cons to to allow us to. To leave the, de the parking lot design as, as it's proposed, um, as as Mr. Mills pointed out, we have tried to go above, on, the overall interior parking lot landscaping. We we've, we've exceeded by close to 50 percent what 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 the minimum requirement is, and so we'd hope that you consider that when you're you're making your final decision. Um, uh, and and with that, I'd be happy to answer any other questions uh, you might have. Mr. Taylor, <laughs> can can you just talk a little bit about the loading? Um, oh, sure. Can docks and whatnot. <clears throat> there, the the, uh, the the building loads at the rear, which is the the north side of the site. That's hard to see that dot, isn't it? I can't see it hardly. <laughs> um, and it loads on either side of this bump out on the back. Okay. Um, the, the loading occurs in the interior of the building, but the, the trucks do not drive into the building. There are dock seals on the building and trucks back up to the building against the dock levelers and seals, and then they load into the interior of the building. Okay. As was mentioned, uh, there aren't any exterior dumpsters except for the small dumpster that sits out close to the fuel area. All of the main building uh, trash is, is loaded from the interior into the compactor, so there's not any of that exterior trash or, or noise that, that go along with that sort of function. I don't think it's practical to irrigate the whole, uh, the whole space. Um, I don't know if it makes any sense to irrigate out along the street buffer, out, out in front of the, 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 the fuel station, because obviously you've got water out there, so it might be simpler to do that. 
I don't know if it's worth your efforts. It's something you might want to think about. I think you've got more landscaping out there. Um, just a thought. It's not a make or break thing for me. But and I can say that, that it's Kroger's practice to try to, to install drought resistant plants. Uh, they prefer not to irrigate. I believe it creates more nuisance and maintenance upkeep than, than the maintenance that's required to, to properly keep a healthy landscaped area. Um, I think you will find if you look at any of the Kroger owned, particularly Kroger owned stores across the region, they're, they're very good property managers. They do a very good job of taking care of their property. And I think, I think you can be assured that they'll do the same here, particularly with the, uh, with the visibility of the frontage along Springdale Road. Um, condition number 13 talked about hiding the mechanicals on the roof of the building. Has, has the new plan addressed all that so that nothing? Yes, we, we will comply with that condition, yes. I, I agree. You guys did a good job with, with the changes you made to the, the original facade. No, it looks, looks really good. So. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think Kroger really, I was, frankly, I, as a developer working with Kroger in the past, I was surprised that they were, uh, they, that, 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 uh, that they, they made all the accommodations they did, and I think it really does look well, nice. We've been reading all these little Kroger cards, and they know how much business they're going to get. <laughs> um, I think that's all the questions I have right now for Mr. Dragon. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Truskowski? Yeah. Um, Steve, what are the traffic plans on how to um, – let me start over. How are the trucks are going to come in and out for loading and unloading? Are they going to come through Yellowstone? Are they going to come through Springdale? What's the traffic patterns, the night, the time of days they're going to come through? Because right now we're having an abundant amount of traffic going up and down Colerain with heavy trucks, and we can't stop that. But what, uh, what, what are the traffic plans, if you can talk about them, is how the, the trucks are going to come in, unload, and come out? Is it one point, of inter at one point in and out or two points? Call in some reinforcements to help me <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob Trainkamp, President of Thomas Graham Associates, civil engineers for the project. It's anticipated that the majority of the trucks will come from, uh, from 275 to the north, so they will enter on Yellowstone, and then they go back behind. There's room to actually, the truck can turn around behind the store at either <clears> end to go at either loading dock. If they want to go back to the north to 275, they will probably exit to the new traffic signal on Springdale Road. It is possible that they would go south on Coleraine Avenue at times. There's another store down there, so sometimes they have multiple stores. And if that's the case, then they would probably exit on Yellowstone and make that right turn. But since Yellowstone is right in and right out, if they want to go north, they would come out to Springdale Road. So is Yellowstone wide enough for a semi-truck to wind in? I mean, I know it is if it takes the entire two-way lane to get in and out of there. It, I believe it did. And, again, that, that intersection of Yellowstone and Coleraine is under the jurisdiction of ODOT, and ODOT has reviewed the plan and reviewed the, uh, the traffic impact study, and it had no recommendation. The traffic impact study did not recommend any improvements to that intersection, and ODOT concurred. So what about the time of deliveries uh, in the morning at 6 I think or it varies. I think they're not in peak, peak hours, uh, but I don't know specifically if, what those hours of deliveries are. But I, I'm pretty sure they're not typically during your, your peak hours of, of traffic loading on, you know, the color well, rain, et cetera. Well, I think, I think I'm asking, is it going to be like at 5 o'clock in the morning because there's still going to be residents back there, or is it going to be 11 o'clock at night? I may have to call for reinforcements as well to make sure that, and I don't know if, if you can answer that at that delivery time. And I know that's way down to where it's the operations of the, of the, of the, of the inner workings of all the departments, and you might not be able to answer that, but I think there was a question about that last time we were here, and so I'd like to see if we can't get it at least halfway answered. My name's Christy Snelling. I'm with the Kroger Company. I work in the real estate department. Um, as for deliveries, they are they could be at 5 a.m. They could be 11 p.m. They could be at noon. It's, there'll be space throughout the throughout the day and into the evenings and every night possibly as well. Okay. Um, as far as number four, I'm I'm kind of in between. Um, if anybody's gone up to Walmart or Stone Creek. I absolutely hate having nothing in between the parking lots because it's suicide lanes because everybody traps cross traffic and the people that are going up and down the lanes are always having to 
be afraid of being T-boned. By putting something in the middle, in my opinion, if it could be worked out, I don't know how. It'd be nice because, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I just don't like it being free where everybody can just start going across the parking lot, mainly up at the front where it really doesn't get used a lot because it's so far all the way uh, away from the door. So that can be, you know, talked about. Um, I am going to go back to number 13 because you talk about you're going to screen and you've worked it out. I, I'd like to have specifics as to how it's going to get worked out and specifically on the canopy of the gas station because are you using, just like at Harrison, the sprinkler heads coming down with the, with the lines above the canopy? On the on the gas station on the gas canopy. There aren't there, there is no roof there is no rooftop equipment on. I understand the that at the at the at the Harrison Kroger the canopy and at the one over in Newport they have the sprinkler lines the sprinkler heads right above them. On top you can see all the sprinkler lines and I'd like to see if what 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 we're going to do with that are we going to see them or are we going to hide them on top of the canopy. Okay. So how are we treating the the uh, uh, rooftop units that are closer to the front of the store where you can see them? Are we putting any kind of treatments around them that screen them, or they're just going to be sitting there? Talking about on the main on the main building. Main store. There are parapets, and those are will be located further from the perimeter of the store to to get them out of the view line. Okay, thank you. Um, As far as the sign, uh, in my opinion, I'd, I'd like to keep it down to where zoning regulations. Uh, actually, I think you're going to have more problems and more congestion because people coming in from Springdale and Coleraine are going to use the Walgreens driveway to come into your space, opposed to going all the way down. The people that are going to be using the one from the Cincinnati end are going to be the ones coming from Springdale. Um, I, I, I think the sign... Um, I understand what you're saying about the signage is down to 150, but the overall structure, and I don't think we talk about the overall, the, just the signage. I think we talk about the overall structure when it comes to the 150 square feet in our, in, in our regulations. Is the, the drawing of how the sign area is computed mm -hmm. in the box? That, so. so in my opinion, I mean, when we come to a vote, I'd like to see it back down to the 150 square feet. And just for record, I'd like to see all the light poles go down to 24 feet. Um, just because I know you're talking about the hot spots and the illumination, but we're going to have a canopy with a lot of illumination. You're using LED lighting so you can control how hot they are in different places and what kind of throw they have. So I, I think the 24 foot, in my opinion, at least for my vote, putting it out there, I'd like them all to be down to 24. That's it. Mrs. Smith. The, you're talking about surface water, r rainwater, stormwater. Okay, uh, the the site actually drains in sort of three different directions. Um, the the sort of from the front of the store to the rear drains to the north. Um, there's a retention basin planned at the at the very north end of the project. There's another uh, area of the the uh, of the site that drains uh, directly more directly south towards Springdale Road. There's a retention basin in that area that, that outlets actually to uh, the storm sewer in Springdale Road. And then there's a third uh, smaller storm area that drains more to the east towards Colerain. Uh, and there's an un there'll be an underground uh, de detention system re uh, installed under the parking lot in that uh, eastern corner that outlets to uh, storm sewer in, uh, I believe, in Yellowstone Drive. And if you don't mind, just to add to that and to your comment previously, just so you know that all the stormwater requirements have to meet Hamilton County Department of Public Works. They have jurisdiction, and they will review all the calculations, all the design for the stormwater management, as well as Hamilton County Soil and Water Conservation. We have to meet all of their requirements for erosion control, et cetera, to get an earthwork permit, as well as Ohio EPA has their requirements. What I can tell you, in my experience, I've been working with Kroger for a long time, 
They are very proactive in being out front in all the requirements for erosion control during construction and post-construction water quality. They will meet and exceed all the requirements and all the regulations that are in place. Okay, thank you. One other question. Um, I know you've addressed this already. Uh, it has to do with the delivery trucks and the noise. And it uh, seemed like we've heard from several residents that they were concerned about the time that the noise would be 5 o'clock in the morning when they were still asleep. So I was wondering if you all might be concerned enough that you might be able to work out something satisfactory to the residents. I guess I would say this, I mean, this is a, it's, it's a, it'll be a very busy, very heavily shop store. Uh, I don't, I, I don't believe Kroger can limit their delivery hours at, at this point in time. It'll, it'll need to be driven by the operations of the store um, in, in order to best serve the customers. I, I'm not sure that, that, uh, that I can stand here tonight and tell you that, that they can limit their delivery hours to this location. Nor do we have any ability to. We probably don't. I did, I'm just curious to know what has been done to address that concern. Well, I know we, we've attempted to buffer um, pretty significantly from the residential uh, um, from the residential uses to the to the west, um, and the intent would be to to uh, you know to, to limit the disruption from the Kroger from the service area. The service area is somewhat removed from those from those residents already. Um, having the interior the internal you know com compactor will help some with with the noise, uh, but there there will be some service and some deliveries in the rear and and uh, and, and again it'll it'll I mean it it's it's an area that that be well maintained and, and but it will have to be used um, in order to properly serve the store okay so will the buffer be on the inside of the fence closer to where the residents are or will it be inside of the fence where Kroger is it the, 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 if I can answer that and I don't want to make that comment on the concern with the noise as you know Kroger has agreed to do the 12-foot solid fence all along that west property line adjacent to the uh, to the, the residents and we think that will aid substantially in being also a sound barrier by being at 12 foot to answer your next question the landscaping will be on the Kroger side of that fence to in that uh, to meet the requirements of the township for that landscape buffer okay I was just thinking if the buffer were outside of Kroger closer to the resident that will prevent some of the noise I'm, I'm not sure how that would, you know, how the buffer, the buffer yard itself it meets the requirements in most of the case of the code being the 30 feet. And where we've gone down, we've agreed to do a 12 foot fence, which mm -hmm. exceeds the requirement. And they've agreed to run that 12 foot fence all along that west property line, which we think will significantly help with any sound concerns. Okay, thank you. I have a question concerning that. Do the trucks idle while they're being unloaded? Depends on the weather. If it's not seven below zero, do they idle? <laughs> they do. I, I, I don't know. No. I think not, but I have said sure. Being a former grocery employee, they idle. Okay. Especially if they're for and trucks. Just to put something out there. I had an engineer tell me that HVAC equipment on the roof is noisier than a truck idling at the dock. Mr. Farron. I only have really just two signs. You know, the sun is a sign. It's 13 by 15. You can't count just the, the lettering on it. Just the lighting. Uh, concerned with the overflow of the lighting into the neighbors. I think the 24 is a good thing on that side. Uh, you're concerned with with the hot spots. I guess lower at all the 24 feet. The additional hot spots <laughs> actually is what you'll have. Yeah, one other thing to point out on the lighting, and I'm not the lighting expert, unfortunately. They have a lighting expert that couldn't be here this evening. But Kroger has, has incorporated the use of LED fixtures now. All their fixtures are LED rather than the old you know, metal halide or high-pressure sodium, which is a lot better light. It's a lot thinner uh, um, 
fixture. Uh, we did actually a site study uh, through one of the properties to the west, and even with the 12-foot fence standing next to the house, you will see the 30-foot pole, you'll still see the 24-foot pole. So, so going down from 30 to 24, we don't think has a significant impact on the neighbors. Again, there's cutoff shields, it's zero foot candles at the property line. And we just think it gives a better overall. It cuts down on the maximum and minimum. Um, and, and actually, the, as we talked about, the, the uh, total average actually goes up with 24 foot poles. That was with just a few of the 24 foot. To go to all 30, you might even end up with additional poles uh, to meet the requirements. Yeah, and I, I would just reinforce that we submitted photometrics for both cases, and both cases, the, the lighting throw to the west is zero. Not it doesn't it doesn't improve the lighting to lower the the lighting throw the lighting spillover to lower the poles. The the. The reason I think we're fighting about this, I mean, my reasoning is, is that we'd like to keep close to zoning as possible. I think the with the irrigation, if you want irrigation, you should amend it and put it in the zoning code as far as irrigation. So fighting about it every time it comes up, we either put it in the code or we don't put it in the code and just not make it a part of anything. So that's the end of as far as the story of land and irrigation. I think the biggest issue is that that um, median. What's what's the temperature of the board on the median? I just a moment. We're going to have that discussion. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. And, and the thing is, with the lighting, I mean, this is a huge parking lot. I mean, it, it's a big island of light, and um, we've had we we're fighting with everybody on coal ranch, from the car dealerships to big box stores about lighting issues out of every one. I mean, everybody wants to go to LED. Wants to go to thirty foot. Wants to brighter uh, ordinances are to turn them off at 11 and until 6 everybody keeps them on so you know in my opinion I'm getting tired of everybody just wanting more and more lighting on coal rain it's just a huge spotlight uh, I think you have enough parking space enough lighting on your building and enough lighting on the parking area that you're going to be seen you're going to be looked at you're going to be known that you're there so that's that's my whole thing. Okay, now we would we'd like to end this portion of it, and the staff will now discuss this. And I think that what we need to do as a zoning commission is work out something that will work for the people that live near this development and Kroger. And I think that we need to discuss this until we get it right. So. Hilliard, do you have anything else? Uh, between us or between? Between us. As far as the islands in the middle, I mean, I, I, in my opinion, I think we should have them maybe with cutoffs at every 50 for an inlet for the for, uh, for the carts. Have how many? Uh, I don't know. How many feet divided by 50, 75 feet in between? I don't know. Maybe two or three. Again, my opinion is that I don't go to Meyer. I don't go to Meyer and I don't go to Walmart because I just don't like those parking spots. And, and it's just a, it's just a personal opinion. Um, I don't want it to influence what they need to do and yeah, how well, we need to do it. That's what that's what we're trying to figure out here. Is, so, I mean, that's my personal so, opinion. That's how I look so at it. I don't want it to you know be biased about what I want or what uh, what what I like to see. So I. 
I disagree with you on the medians. I'm fine with striking condition number four altogether. I think that these guys have a better feel for what their parking lot needs to look like and, and how it needs to function than we do. And and the you know staff had already recommended eliminating one of them anyway. So my head is let's just strike condition number four altogether. Um, I'm with you on the light poles. I think we need to stick to code at 24 feet. I just leave it at that. Um, yeah, well, I'm getting there, making sure I didn't miss anything else. I think really we were there were th kind of three things that we were in disagreement: the the the, the light poles, the, the sign out front, and the parking median. So, so there's. I'm, I'm good with one. I'm not good with the other. Uh, as far as the sign, uh, yeah, I gotta. I, I don't disagree with you guys. It's a nice looking sign, and I think it's well proportioned. But I think it's too big as far as it, it exceeds code, and um, everybody in Colerain is gonna know where your marketplace store is. You don't need a 20 foot sign out front. I, personally, I don't think you need a sign out front, but you gotta advertise your gas prices. So um, my head is gonna be that you've gotta you've gotta meet code on that. So. And I think otherwise we've we've come to agreement on everything. Mr. Mills, uh, what size is this sign? Shell station, you fifteen feet. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. And it, well, you can see that one. Yep. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Smith, do you have anything? Ferry. Just about everything, and I I do agree with Scott on the island. Islands in the spot, I think it's also going to affect when you put islands in there, your parking pass and everything. What do you do with all those parking spots? So, right now, we want to strike number four, which is the. I think if, if we're all kind of in. Everybody close but doing to it. agreement, I'll make a motion and we. Amend. <laughs> we can we can vote on my motion, or we can, someone can amend my motion. Okay. Can go the chair will entertain a motion to accept final development plan ZA two hundred one four dash zero seven Croker Marketplace. Um, I'll make I'll make a motion, case number ZA two hundred one four dash zero 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 seven Croker Marketplace. Um, I'm not going to go through all the conditions, but as as uh, presented in the staff um, recommendation with the following changes, strike number four completely, modify number nine such that all light poles are a maximum of 24 feet in height, and modify condition number 16 such that the monument sign on Springdale Road uh, has a 15 foot height maximum and a 150 square foot maximum. And uh, if I may, just for housekeeping, um, then with the variances, we would strike variance number four, which is the uh, maximum height of the lighting poles. Mm -hmm. And we would strike, uh, we would change variance two to say uh, the applicant shall be permitted to not install. And we'll, sl we'll strike one of, and it'll read the two landscaped medians in the parking area. Okay. And then you all, uh, I would recommend also striking two and three in your motion, uh, condition two and three. Okay. Your motion. Oh, yeah, I was assuming they were already struck. Right. Okay, yes. Got it. The yes. Strike, strike numbers two and three as they were in the, in the recommendation. Yes. Are we all clear? Okay. Good. Yes. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded that we have uh, ex accept, no, we vote to accept case ZA 2014 07 program marketplace. Could we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Tchaikovsky? Yes. Mr. Westfall? Aye. Mr. Fearing? Motion carried. 
Yes. Okay, next on the agenda, next on the agenda is a minor modification to a final development plan for JD by Rider. This also affects the Kroger marketplace. Staff, when he gets his pointer, will make a presentation. Okay, so this is a, a very cut and dry application. Um, <clears throat> The JD Byrider site is located to the north of Yellowstone Drive. It's a, on the corner of Yellowstone and Coleraine Avenue. Currently, um, the front of the JD Byrider site here is zoned B2, and the rear, which goes back here, is zoned uh, Plan Development Business. And this, um, initially, when it, the development of, of this zoning um, was to the, the intent was to provide a uh, a buffer yard between JD Byrider and the residential uses to the west. Well, with the zone change um, that occurred um, at at for the Kroger development, there are no longer residential uses to the west, so the, there's no longer a need for this this buffer. So, the the request is to um, amend the final development plan for JD Byrider and transfer this triangle here uh, to the Kroger parcel and allow this parcel to remain um, uh, planned development business uh, as, as shown on the drawings that are in your, your packets. So it's a, it's a very simple um, uh, minor modification to the final development plan and, um, uh, and I, staff recommends approval. A question. Yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, Mr. Graham, Bob, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm Trent. Tom, sorry, sorry. So, that back end is that getting wood fence back in there? Is that what I'm saying? For JD By Rider, once you take over, JD By Rider is going to put fencing back there again? Correct, and it's going to be taken away by that triangle replaced in that area okay um, what about light poles and things of that nature is there light poles back there now that have to be removed and, and replaced is are we doing anything there I see new curbs but um, my apology I haven't gone back there lately to see if there's any poles there are, you know? there are poles back okay. there. Because I see new curbs, new wood fence, but I don't see any relocations of, of light poles or anything of that nature. The light poles need to be relocated? Dragon with Vandercar. There are, uh, there are three light poles that will have to be adjusted. Yeah. And those would be the three that are located on the western Yeah, in that, mm -hmm. that triangle portion. Yeah. area. Yep. Right. That's it. That's it. Mr. Taylor? Nothing. Mrs. Smith? I have no question. Mr. Faring? Okay. Staff, do you have any discussion? No, staff. staff. Commissioner. You guys. By me. <laughs> the commissioners. Do you have any? Okay. The chair would entertain a motion to accept minor modification of final development plan of J.D. Byrider. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the minor modification of final development plan of J.D. Byrider. Could we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Tchaikovsky? Yes. Mr. Westfall? Aye. Mr. Faring? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you all. Good luck. Good luck and go for it. Next on the agenda is a public hearing where we, of which we have none. After that is the informal concept review of which we have none. Next is old business. Is there any old business? None. Next is new business. The initiation of a text amendments, streamlining variance process and harmonizing notice requirements with the Ohio revised Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. So um, the process for uh, 
making a change to our zoning resolution, um, the way that that process starts, it can start one of two ways. The zoning commission can create a can can make a motion to initiate a text amendment, or the trustees can pass a resolution. Um, this was uh, the next meeting that the next opportunity I had uh, to to initiate the resolution. So I, I I'm bringing it to you all tonight. Um, to, to summarize, I'm requesting that we, we make two changes to the text of the zoning resolution. The first change is an effort to streamline the variance process that the Board of Zoning Appeals goes through. And the second is an effort to align our zoning resolution with Ohio Revised Code, uh, particularly as it relates to um, who receives uh, written notice of zoning action. So uh, the first change, um, is related to the Board of Zoning Appeals process. So currently, the way the process works, um, uh, if somebody wants to apply for a variance, um, there is an application that's made, there's a hearing of the appeal in front of uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals, and then at the end of that appeal, at the end of that night, there's a motion that's made, and then a vote that's taken. That's called a straw vote. Okay, and so then what we do after that straw vote is, uh, you know, Becky and I go back to our offices, we write up a resolution, and then we bring it back to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, the, a second time. Um, and uh, that, it adds an incredible amount of time to the process, uh, and which is unnecessary, and, and other communities don't do it this way. Um, a, a better practice, I believe, would be to, um, to uh, streamline the process such that the applicant you know makes application has a hearing and then that night a motion is made that would contain the findings of fact and um, and uh, conclusions of law that are, would be required and then the next day I could issue a zoning certificate so it would eliminate 30 days on the process um, so the Board of Zoning Appeals um, uh, it's in their bylaws they have bylaws just like you guys do in their bylaws it stipulated how they're supposed to vote they've at their last meeting they amended their bylaws to allow this to occur so now we just need to get the, the zoning law to allow this to occur and then we can, we can implement so that's that's the first change um, and I'll of course um, I'll have actual text for you in the future so the way this works is you initiate it we draft it up you send it to Regional Planning Commission, then it comes back to you all. The actual text will come back to you all, and then you make a recommendation to the trustee. So this is just a concept I'm asking for you to initiate through motion. Yeah, procedural. Okay, so then um, uh, the second change that I'm requesting, the Ohio Revised Code um, says that in cases where a proposed zoning amendment intends to rezone or redistrict 10 or fewer parcels of land, that written notice of the hearing has to be mailed to all owners or um, of property within and contiguous to and directly across the street from the area that's proposed to be rezoned or redistricted. Our zoning resolution currently says that uh, written notice has to be given to all owners of land lying within 200 feet of the parcel proposed for rezoning. So my recommendation is to harmonize uh, our zoning resolution with the state law. Um, so uh, this evening I'm, I'm requesting that um, uh, the board moved to initiate a text amendment that would streamline the variance process for the BZA and to harmonize notice requirements found in the zoning resolution. Darcy. Do, do. Why are you always going first? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, you go first. I'll go ahead. <laughs> go, ahead. No, go, go right ahead. Um, the notification requirements. It sounds like going to what the state says may decrease the amount of notification we do today. It does. It makes it easier procedurally to figure out who's within uh, 200 feet. So I understand that, but something that our residents have told us is that we don't do a good enough job notifying them. So it seems contrary to what we've heard from a lot of our residents. So I think that the RC, well, I think that we, I don't know. We do a pretty good job of getting. Inf I think. I mean, this is. This we is we think we do. Yeah. I, I mean, we we get we get all of our materials go out um, on the website. We also send out anybody that wants to sign up for um, an email um, containing all of our agenda items. Um, you can sign up at corain.org. So any member of Corain Township or anybody could sign up for the newsletter, and every month they'll get an email that says, "Hey, they'll get notification of everything." Um, so what this allows us, to, and I encourage people to do that. Um, uh, what this allows us to do is, you know, in an instance where you have 10 large parcels, you could have, you know, 40 different properties more within right. 200 feet, and um, that becomes uh, 
it becomes difficult. And I think that with the technology that we have now to where everybody can get it in their email box, uh, inbox, um, anyway. I understand. Yeah. I just think we need to be, and for most instances, that's probably fine. Right. The minimum is probably fine. Yeah. There might be times when something's large or controversial that maybe we want to take it upon ourselves to go above and beyond what the sure. requirements are. Yeah. So let's just keep that in mind. Okay. The 200 feet, I mean, we could be missing somebody but at the same time, too many people. I don't know about that. In the first one, what kind of control did they lose as far as not having that extra 30 days to come back and, and, and be able to, you know, second thought? Right. No, that's a really good point. So if there is a very controversial BZA case and um, we knew that it was likely to get litigated, uh, likely what what we would do is um, table the matter that night and have the have our law director draft up language for a motion. Um, so case by case. Yeah, so they would they wouldn't lose the ability to because um, they have to they have to make a decision within 30 days of the close of the hearing. So they can, can table you can not close the hearing and table the hearing until the next month, or you could close the close the hearing and then make a decision at the next meeting still. Yeah, because I just hate for somebody to, for, for some of us to lose the ability to, you know, those 30 days to think about it yeah. and or, or put out motions, yeah. have those people come back. And, and I know it takes an extra 30 days, but just don't want somebody, I mean, losing that. And I think that control, to me, though. Not control, but losing that opportunity. To, yes. But by the same token, the current process is confusing because People leave here thinking a decision's been made, and in reality, it, it hasn't. hasn't. Well, and the scary thing is, is that, um, you know, if you have one set of five board members, there's a straw vote made, we draft a resolution, come back the next month, maybe two people are absent, maybe there's a different, maybe, I mean, you could have right. a straw vote, vote taken, and then it could be overturned, and then we're in a pickle. Um, I would welcome a dialogue, a community conversation about the 200 feet. I mean, if it's important that we continue to, to send uh, folks notices that are within the 200 feet, I think that well, we should have that conversation. I, I understand your, your desire to standardize things and try to simplify them. I just know that we heard specifically with, with some yeah. of the, the, Kroger. the, Kroger. the subdivision yeah. there by Kroger that, that we didn't do a good enough job in notifying them. And, and you know... Where's the line that you draw? I mean, you know, so yeah. I think I'm okay with your amendment. Like I said, though, I think we just need to take it upon ourselves when we know something's going to be somewhat controversial. Yes, sure. That let's go above and beyond what the requirements are to make sure we notify people. I think that makes sense. I'll agree on that. And the, okay. and the first one to do a case-by-case -case basis as long as we can make sure that we can table yeah. that, that decision instead of making it that night. Definitely. That's a good point. Make yep. sure BZA understands that they can. Yeah, yes. I don't want to take any control of, uh, control of BZA taking away control. No, and you wouldn't, and that wouldn't be. You would still have exactly the same ability to deliberate. Okay. Um, as you, it's just yeah. I have a question. Do we still hang signs on properties that are for BZA? No. Good. Why don't we? Because there's nobody to deliver them. We haven't done that since I've been here. Come on. <laughs> there hasn't There's nobody that can't deliver them. There hasn't. We haven't done that since I've been here. Yeah. I mean, Make I. That, yeah. Huh? Make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> you can, I mean, it's not in the law, so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I. We haven't done that since I've been here. So I don't know. Huh. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Okay. May come next month with a motion. Oh, yeah. There you go. Mrs. Smith. Mr. Ferring? Aye. Okay. So do we need to make a motion yes. for you to my, proceed? With yeah, so my, my request from you this evening is to make a motion just to initiate the text amendment process. The chair would entertain a motion to initiate the text process, streamline the uh, process of harmonizing notice requirements with the ORP. I'll second that motion. And the BZA. And the, and the BZA. BZA. Text change. I, Exchange. I did. Ilya. Ilya made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. We moved and seconded that we uh, initiate the text amendment streamlining variance 
process and harmonizing notice requirements at the ORC and the VZA. Can we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Tchaikovsky? Yes. Mr. Westfall? A I. And Mr. Ferry? Thank you. Is there any administrative and that? Anybody from the administration have Mr. Just a minute. You're next. But yeah. you're next. No, is, no administration. Is there any announcements, Mr. Kraskowski? No, ma ma no announcements, but I will go back to what I said before is that I, you know, with this irrigation, either make a vote on putting it in the zoning right. code and make it possible, which I think it's an overburden on people to do that, I agree. especially with. You know, with it, it, lots that are three acres, and we have to take a half an inch line all the way to the yeah. front of the street. Well, yeah, that, we talked so, about that when we did uh, correct uh, Northgate. So, because yes, we went north to do that, and that was all the way across that parking lot. So, just 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 as an opinion, if 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 we want to put it in the zoning code, then we should put it in the zoning code. But if we don't put it in the zoning code, then I'm getting sick and tired of this conversation over and over and over. Sure. Um, uh, it's, it, it, it's just it's just um, it, it's just foolish to mess around with that conversation if everybody agrees on putting in irrigation say now if not then we I agree with you I mean I yep very good next is our next meeting is Tuesday March 25th 25th 17th Today's the same. Oh, that was the agenda is, is wrong. It's, it's uh, that's right. It has to be oh, yeah. 17. It's a 17. 17th. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Oops. Well, I was just reading what was here. <laughs> I don't learn yet. The, the so, chair so, will. So is is Trevor have any other things that need to come to you before they start all of us? They go for. That's right. They can't go for a building permit. That's what I was asking. So the, what, they still need to do that. And with the traffic. Okay. Chair would entertain a motion for adjournment. There a second? We moved in a second that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.